So today this is the third lecture of design and analysis of algorithms. We are searching. The agenda for today is searching, linear search, binary search, and we'll take a few examples of linear and binary search. Now, what's the problem? Problem is searching of an element from a list of records. So we are given a list of records and each record has an associated key. So we have a lot of records in a file. And each record is identified by a particular attribute, we call it key. So every record has an associated key. Now, give the problem is to find an efficient algorithm for searching these records which are containing a particular key. So out of the file which consists of a number of records, we are in search of a record with a particular key value. So the problem is to find out an efficient algorithm using which we can search a record from a list of records based upon a particular key associated with each record. So now efficiency. What is efficiency? Efficiency for a searching algorithm is obviously quantified in terms of average time analysis to retrieve an item. What is the average time required to retrieve that particular record from that list of records? Now, To understand what searching is, suppose there are n number of records. Here we have a list of 700 records, and each record, for example, consists of some detail about a particular person. So we have a record of 700 people. Now, out of this, we need to find the details of a particular person. Now, here we see that for every person in the list, we have each person is associated with some key value. For example, take the fourth element in the list, and if this is the array, this is the 0th position, and that is the 700th position. So, in all, we have 700 one elements here. Let's take an example of the fourth record. So, this is a child. And the identification of child is the number 5806256855. So here, an ID number is given to each record or each person. Every record in the list consists of the details of a person. Now, the ID of any person identifies that particular person. So we are in search of that particular record from the list. Now each record in the list has an associated key and for example in this example it is ID number. So given a particular number, ID number, the problem is that how can we efficiently retrieve these records from this list of records? So how can I find a particular person from this list of records efficiently? So basically when we are talking about the search algorithm, then how fast does the search have to be? So let's explore the following two search algorithms, keeping speed in mind. So how fast can we search a record from the list? Now this searching can be done in two ways. One is sequential, which is also called linear search. And another one is called binary search. So let's start from the first algorithm that is linear search or sequential search. Now by the word itself, the sequential or linear, it's obvious that the steps go through an array of records one at a time. One after the other, the records will have to be searched until a 
particular record is found. So we look for a record with the matching key. If we have 10 records with the key numbers 1, 2, 3 till 10 and we are trying to find out the record of a person with identification number 5 then until we get that identification number 5 in the records we will keep on searching every element one after the other. So this is linear search. So the search stops when record with matching key is found. So until we don't found that, until we find a particular record, we keep on searching. And thereafter when we find, the search stops. So after I have found 5 from a list of 10 records, I will stop searching further. And or in another case, when search has examined all records without success. It means that it is possible that the element does not exist in the record. So, we will keep on searching for that particular record until we find that record or and if we find that record, we stop searching at that moment of time. In other case, if that record does not exist in the list, we will we'll have to keep on searching till we reach the last record. So if the record is present, we will keep on searching one after the other until we reach that record. If that record is not present, we will have to keep on searching till the last element and then the algorithm stops. So a linear algorithm or sequential algorithm will inspect each and every record in the list until we either find that record or we reach the end of the list if the record does not exist. So, a simple code for linear search is let's take an array of size 100, an array of integers of size 100. So, we have say 100 records in and a list of records and the values stored are of integer type. So let A be an array of 100 elements of integers. So let these be the elements. This is the maximum size that the array A can hold. Now for example, let us initialize this array with these values. So presently in the array what we have is 1, 100, 2, 66, 55, 44, 88, 77, 12, 23, 45, 9 and 87. So these are the integers stored in an array. And the integer we wish to search is the key. Now let's take this key as 88. Again, this is of integer type, so we have declared the key as integer and the value is initialized as, is assigned as 88. So out of this list of elements, integers, we are trying to find out 88, the position where this 88 lies. Now, since we are going for a linear search, we will keep on searching the array, each and every element from beginning till the end of the array. So, if this is the zeroth position of the array and till the last but one position we will keep on searching. So, for int i is equal to 0 till i is less than array size, array size is 100, so it will be 99 here, we will keep on implementing 1 by 1. Now, if ai is equal to key, so if we start from the beginning, if 1 is equal to 88, we say that uh, found, we have found it at, at array subscript i. So we have found the element at that particular position. And if we do not, and we turn found to true. Otherwise, if we have not found, 
we spread that we could not find the element. Now, let us see how it works. I starts from 0 till the end of the element. So, AI, if AI is equal to K, and we keep on varying the value of I from 0 to 99. So, we are checking here if it is found at the first position. In this case, at 0th position, we do not have A. We increment the value of I by 1, and the value of I is now 1. So, we match 100 with 88. So, this is not 88. So, we increment the value of I and the value of I is incremented to 2 and 0, 1, 2. Here, 2 is also not equal to 88. And so on. We keep on incrementing the value of I and when we reach this position, which is 6th position of an element, we say that the, it is printed that there it is found it at a subscript 6. That means we have found this element at the 6th position. So in linear search, we keep on searching next, next, next element till we get the element or the list is exhausted. So let us consider the worst case. The cases where we must loop over all n records, so that is the worst case. In first case, the desired record appears in the last position of the array. In some case, the record we are searching for might be present in the last position. So, for this, we will have to inspect each and every uh, element in the record from the beginning till end. That is the one of the worst cases. Another one is when the record does not exist in the list at all. In that case also, we will have to search from beginning till end. So, we will have to inspect all n number of elements. So, in this case, for an array of n elements, the worst case time for a serial search or a linear search requires n array accesses. So, it is of the order of n. I hope I am clear. The worst case is order of n because each and every element of, from the list of array of size n is inspected when there are two cases. One, the element is positioned at the last place and the, uh, second, the element is not present in the list at all. average case time of a linear search. Let us assume that all the keys are equally likely in a search and we always search for a key that is in the array. Now let us assume that the key we are searching for is present in the array and all the keys are equally likely in a search. So we assume these two things prior to studying the average case time. Now let us take an example in which we have an array of 10 records and if we search for the first record then it requires one array access. If the second record is to be searched then two array accesses are required and so on. Let me put it in, in some other way that if the record we are searching for is positioned at first place we will get it in the first attempt in the first search itself. If the record is present at the second place we will have to access the array twice. If the record is present at third position we will have to access the array thrice and so on. So if there are n number of records and in this example we take this n to be 10 so the average of all these searches will be something like this. Thus, if the element is 
present at first position, the number of search will be 1 and we will get the record. If the array is, element is present at second position, we will have to search twice. So, in this way, the number of times we need to search for all the elements, that means when the element is present at first position, at second position, at third position, till ten position. We will sum all these and will divide by ten, which will give us the average case time. So, one is the number of searches we make when the element is present at first position. We need to search twice when the element is present at second position. We need to search three times when the element is present at third position and so on. 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and if the element is present at tenth position, the last position, we need to access or search 10 times. So, summing up all these number of searches and dividing it by 10 will give us the average time for searching the element. In this case it is 5.5. Now generalizing it, for an average size of n elements, let us calculate the average case running time of a linear search error. So it will be 1 plus 2 plus so on till n divided by n. This is again equal to n into n plus 1 divided by 2 upon n. Which is equal to n plus 1 divided by 2. And hence and therefore, the average case time complexity is again of the order of n. So here, the worst case and average case running time of a linear search algorithm is the same. Now there is another relation. We are going for a linear search or sequential search on a list or a file, a list of records and these files may be ordered or they may be unordered. So let us take both the cases one by one and see how much time or what is the procedure for searching an algorithm in an unordered list and in an ordered list. So let's take the example of linear search in an unordered list where the records are not arranged in some specific order of their key values. So the basic algorithm goes like this. Get the search key criteria. So what we will find the, we will get the key that is to be searched and get the first record from the file. We will pick up the first record and we will match it with the key. And we will keep on doing it until there are records remaining in the file. So while record is not equal to key, means when it is equal to key, it's okay. We will come out of the loop and if we don't find the key and there are still more records remaining in the file, we will get the key upon getting the next record. So while we do not find the key, so while record is not equal to the key and there are still more records in the file, we will keep on moving and retrieving the next record one after the other. This is the case of an unordered file. Now what in case of an ordered file? When you say an ordered file, for example, from a list of um, the elements like 4, 8, 6, but uh, in order may be 4, 6 and 8. This is an ordered file. Get the search criteria key as before. Then we will again read the first record from the file. Now remember we are talking about an ordered file where the key values are arranged in a particular sequence, in a particular order. So while the record is less than the key value. Now for example, if we take 
4, 6 and 8 and we are in search of 6 then it is no use searching for 6 after we have found 6 or if it is less than since it is less than 8 it is of no use searching for 6 for 8 or elements which are greater than 6 so we will keep on searching until the key, the record, the, the value of record is less than the value of key only. So while the record is less than key and there are still more records, we keep on reading the next record. And if the record is equal to key, we then find success in finding the other records, else there is no match in the file. So if the list is ordered, we will keep on searching the record till we find the record or the record is less than the value of T we are searching for. For which again we find the center of this array. 
and the center of this array is this. And the record again is found to be present in the right position part of this array. So in this list again we try to find the center element and finally we get the element. So it's, it is definitely a faster one. So in this algorithm as you can see, searching, we start searching from the big array, we divide this array into half and if we find that the array is positioned in one half, we completely discard the other half. Now our searching will only be in this particular half position. Again after this, it will again be divided into half and our search will be only in this half and so on. Let's take an example to see how fast is a binary search. But since in our example there were 11 items in the list which took 4 tries. There were 11 items here. At first we divided it into half. So it was the first try. Secondly, again we found the second, the second half of the list. This was the second try. Here again we divided the list third time, the third try. And finally we found the element. So here in an element of 11, we had to try four times. So how about the worst case for a list with say 32 elements? So if there are 32 elements, in the first try, we will have a list has 16 elements. We divide the array into half. Initially, the array was of 32 elements. In the first try, we divided it into half and we got two arrays of 16 elements each. The element must have been present in any of these two half. So the, the, the portion in which the element was present had 16 elements. We again divided it into two parts and these two parts had 8 elements. Again it was divided into half with 4 elements. It was again divided into half which had 10, 2 elements. And finally it had was again divided to find the item which was being searched for. Now here in this way you can see that we need 5 tries to find out an element in a list of 32. So Assume that we are given an array of records that is how sorted and for instance an array of records with integer key is sorted from smallest to the largest and id numbers are the key values and an array of records with string key is sorted in alphabetical order there may be some of the instances of binary search. So what is the basic idea? The basic idea is to locate the middle of the array and compare the value at that location with the search key. So what are we doing? We are finding the middle value of the array. Now remember that this array elements are arranged in a particular sorted order. Let's take it in ascending order. So we try to find out the middle item. If that middle item matches the key value, we have found it. Otherwise, we will again, we will find the, we will check if they are equal or in which half does that element lies. So, if they are equal, we are done. Otherwise, we will have to decide which half of the array contains the search key. Now, if 
the element we are searching for is less than the middle element. That element will be lying in the left part, in the first half of the array. And if the element we are searching for is more than or is greater than the middle element, it will be lying in the second half of the array. So first we will try to find the middle array, the middle element and if it is found, it is done. Otherwise, we will compare the middle value with our search key. So we will repeat the search on that half of the array and ignore the other half. The search continues until the key is found or matched or no elements remain to be searched. Let's go to, through the pseudocode of binary search. If size is not is equal to 0, found is equal to false obviously, else we'll take this thing. Middle is equal to the index of approximate midpoint of array segment. So, approximately the middle point of the array segment is taken as the middle end. Now, if the target we are searching for is equal to the A middle, where A is the array and middle is the center position of the array. So, the value which is stored at the center of this, that array is denoted by A middle. So, if the target we are searching for is equal to the middle element, then the target has been found. <coughs> Else, if the target is less than that middle array, then we are searching for target in area before that midpoint. Means the left part of, left half of the array or the first half of the array. Else, search for target in the area after the midpoint. So, if the target is equal to midpoint, we have found. If the target is less than midpoint element, the target must be lying in the portion which is left of the midpoint, before the midpoint. And if the target is greater than the midpoint, it will be lying in the uh, area which lies after the midpoint. Let's take an example and understand how this binary search works. Now this is a list of elements. Thirteen elements are here from 0 to 12. And we are in search of the key value that is 19. Here you can see 19 lies here. So as per the binary search algorithm, we will divide first the whole array into two parts for which we will find the middle value of the elements. So out of this 30 elements, this position is the middle value, the sixth position. And here the element is 29. So 29 is not equal to 19 and 19 is less than 29. Therefore, this 19 should lie in this half of the array. And hence, we discard the other half. Now, in the next position, we will find the middle value of the first half. It goes like this. So, again we divide this array into two parts. And the middle value is found to be this. Now, 19 is not equal to 15, but 19 is greater than 15, so we discard this part and we take up the second part. Here, again we find the middle value to be 25, and the target 19 is less than 25, so it lies in this position. Now, finally, we have a single element in this list and since 19 is equal to 19, we have found this element 19. 
So at each try, we'll keep on dividing the whole array into two parts by first finding the middle position of the array and then comparing the value at the middle position with the target. If the target is equal to middle value, we have found. If the target is less than the middle value, we will find the element in the first part, otherwise in the second part. Again, if we are in search of the element 18, now here in this case, we are searching for a key that is 18. So the middle point is again the same, that is 29. And since 18 is less than 29, we discard the second half. This is the first half. Again, the middle point is, the element at middle is 15. And 18 is greater than 15. So we will consider 19, 25 and 27. Here also, the middle point is, element at middle point is 25. And 18 is less than 25. So we will take up the first half of the array. That is, array containing 19. Now again we search, to compare the value of the search key 18 with the value 19 and here we have not found since this was the last element and it did not match with our search key we did not find the element in the array. So here again we, had the, we took 4 passes to search the element. So what is the efficiency of binary search? So in this way we can say that the binary search algorithm runs in log n to the base 2 n times. So log n means the log to the base 2 of some value of n. So we are dividing at each pass we are dividing the number of n, the total of the array into two parts, into two halves. So it goes on becoming half the size of the original array after each pass. So to summarize, let's go through the linear search again. The linear search is good if the arrays are small because in linear search we need to go through each and every element. So we need to search every element in the list one by one. And hence, it's not good in the case when the array are big, large in size, because it will take more time. Also, linear search is performed on unsorted arrays. But if the array are sorted, it may not be that good. And here in linear search, it examines every element, and hence, it is the complexity is of the order of n. In the case of binary search, again, we, I feel that it is performed on sorted array of integers and if we take this array and search for a target 7, we have to divide it into two parts. In binary search, we divide the array into two parts at every pass. This was the middle point. Since 7 lies is less than 11, we take the next point is this. Again, we decide to find at the middle point which is 6 and 7 is greater than 6. So now the new point would be 7 and we have found the target at this position. So at third position or at A2, we have found the element. So this is how binary search is performed. Now it's good when the arrays, arrays are large and sorted. So in order to perform a binary search, the array has to be in sorted order. And the approach it follows is divide and conquer. So after each pass, the array is divided into two parts and then it is finished. The order complexity is of the order of log n for binary search. But the books that you may refer are here.
introduction to algorithm by Coleman and fundamentals of computer algorithms by Horowitz and Sally.